What is up, my G? How to back with another Eagle update? Welcome to another thrilling episode of Diamond Crew Sports Podcast Radio Show, the ultimate destination for all things sports. I am your host, Hada. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual observer, get ready for a dynamic ride through the latest headlines that makes Diamond Crew your go to source for everything sports. This is the Diamond Crew Sports Podcast, where passion meets the airwaves. What up, what up, y'all? And welcome to another fire episode of Diamond Crew Sports Podcast Radio Show. I'm too hyped for y'all to be here, man. I'm too turned up right now. Way too turned up. And why not? It's Dollars Week. And it's time for us to respond. And guess what, man? The first thing I want to talk about today is the updated injury report. Everyone who is on the active roster ready to go. Look, man, as an Eagle fan, I have been reporting on injuries all year. This year has been a season full of injuries back to back to back. But like I said, this is football. It's a part of the game. But finally, finally, we all healthy and we got all the horses in the stable. So, man, that's exciting news. Um, But the injury report did look like this. Julio Jones, he had a growing injury. He was limited in practice, but it's no destination for him. So he should be available. Um, Grant Cockatera, ankle, full participation. Fletcher Cox, groin. Full participation. Zach Cunningham, hamstring, full participation. Dallas Goddard, forearm, full participation. Darius Slay, we know he had a a rest and he had a knee issue. Full participation. Jack Stahl, knee, big blocking Jack, full participation. Wow. That feels good, man. That feels good because we have been injured a lot this year. So um, on the other side of the ball, the Cowboys, man, they are healthy as well for the most part. Um, They only have one player out, and it's uh, offensive tackle Matt Welletsko. Probably butchers that. He has a shoulder injury, and he will not be available. But everybody else is available. Injury is not going to be a problem. Everybody's ready to go, and I can't wait. Shaq Leonard, man, changed his number to 53 because Christian Ellis did not clear waivers. You know, as the reports came out, the Patriots picked him up. More reports came out. It was like six teams who was knocking down Christian door, um, and maybe because uh, he is a, a good player. He's athletic. He's fast. You know, he needs development. He's going to probably do good things as he moves forward in his career. So shout out to him, man. And hopefully he does well. You know, while that team is trying to build and, um, you know, get back to winning football, he can probably help those guys out a lot. So Shaq Leonard changed his number to 53. You know, that's his number. He He's had his best seasons in. So the you know the mojo is there, the juju is there, you know what I'm saying. So we we just trying to um, see him get out there and, and make some plays for us, man. There's a commercial out. Dak done involved himself in a colon cleanser commercial, and on the bottle he had a picture of an eagle on the shit bottle, like he's about to shit on us. As players, as an organization, as coaches. Everybody, as fans, we have to shut this team up. Finally. Finally. Just shut them up. We have to. Because everybody got a lot to say about the Philadelphia Eagles. All the judgment in the world. They hate our team. They hate our franchise. But guess what? I love that franchise. 
I love that team. So I know what we built for and we built for success. And I know we need to get back to our brand of football. We, we've been doing our thing. We've been playing good ball. And our ratings are through the roof. they rather watch us lose than watch anything else. They're not watch at all. I see that. That's called hate and envy. You hate us because you ain't us. Lane Johnson, a really good player, um, a guy who we rely on heavy, um, solid. I see him go against so many great defensive ends, and he took care of business. He's a nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. It's well-deserved. So congratulations to him. Uh, it was a video of uh, Kelsey getting pretty emotional while they surprised him with a presentation because he didn't know that he won no war. And Kelsey really poured his guts out. You know, you can tell that they have a really good relationship. And that was pretty cool to me. So, you know, shout out to Lane for that. The Slay response to Seth Joyner's comments um, about the uh, DBs um, not wanting to tackle. This has been huge. You know, it's been so many tweets going back and forth about this. This is what Slay said. Played a very, very solid game. Had a great tackling. You know, I was tackling very, very well. You know, a guy named Seth Jordan sitting saying that uh, we don't want to tackle. I don't know what kind of tackle he's talking about because I think I led the team in tackles at that as well. Now, I don't know what kind of tackle he wants you to do. You know what I'm saying? Getting the guy on the ground is getting the guy on the ground. You know, I think he, Seth played uh, maybe linebacker or something. And, uh, yeah, I think Buddy just wants you to, like, try to knock folks out. Well, I'm only 190 pounds. Ain't too many people I could just like, you know, knock out. And then there's safety rules, you know, it's caution to this. And uh, I don't think back then they taught them properly how to tackle because they used to tackle with their head down. I don't tackle with my head down, you know, so I try to keep my head up. You know, I want to be able to talk to my kids. I want to have teeth in my mouth. You know, so I don't want to have them keep getting knocked out or whatever. I don't want to be in concussion protocol because I'm going to miss a game. But I do lay my body on the line for my team each and every week. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know what Seth Jordan would be coming with all that uh, scary stuff, but, uh, you know, nobody never been scared to tackle nobody, but he, yeah, but I, I think I led the team in tackles, so I think I probably, I think I tackled pretty well, you know, of course I always can do better. You know, we all have family that we need to um, take care of, so, you know, I, I get that, but um, I definitely see where Seth Joyner is, is saying, you know, back then, football was just smash mouth, right? It was you know, mano a mano, I'm putting my helmet on you. It don't really matter what happened. You know, they had to take that away from the game because, you know, all of the things, um, you know, that these players have been going through after football. With saying all that, man, I think that Seth Joyner has a point. I think that, he, you know, he could do some due diligence on his staff. I really do. 49ers defensive end Nick Bosa believes they revealed a strategy to slow down the Eagles' potent offense. According to Bosa, the key is forcing Jalen to stay inside the pocket, limiting his dual threat capabilities. The blueprint involves denying him opportunities to run up the middle and encouraging him to scramble outside, making him more predictable by keeping a disciplined defensive approach. Bosa hopes the Cowboys take note from the game tape or the blueprint. Nick Bosa. You need a blueprint to Lane Johnson. That's what you need to be worried about. And you will see us again in January. You will. And that's a fact. Sounds like JC the baby rhino is ready for Dallas this week. It's going to be out there. You know, we plan on coming with all the physicality we bring as a group, as a D-line, DNs, and stuff like that. We just come out there, we're going to see what we'll be the most physical. He said he about to get physical. We know we lacked physicality last week. We ready to send a message. A.J. Brown has been kind of chirping a little bit all week, you know, saying different things, getting himself ready for the game. We got to send a message this week. Sunday Night Football, man, on NBC. Why y'all do my guy like that? Look, I'm looking at this picture, bro, and they got Dak and his cowboy getup and his cowboy hat, and that's fine. But then I look at the other side to my dog Jalen, and they got him in a cowboy outfit too, you know, like it's a wild, wild west. Put my dog in something that he, that's, that's real, when we come up in here, man, we coming up in here in our yuttas. You know what I'm saying? We coming up here in, in the all-black dicky suit, the shirt and the pants. You know what I'm saying? We got the, the, the Philly the Philly fitted on top on our head. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got all this cowboy get up out here. Like, man, I wish they would have took him up out of that, man. That just don't seem right to me, man. Sunday Night Football, man, y'all got to do better. Y'all got to do better. 
Look, man, usually I try to, you know, add in some different football team talk, but this is Dallas week. And the, the rules are when it's Dallas week, we got to really break down this matchup as much as possible. So it, it ain't going to be about no other teams this week. It's about, Eagle, it's about Eagles and Dallas this week. And let's go over the um, QB matchup for this game. Dak Prescott is currently sitting at about um, a completion percentage of 70.1, 3,234 passing yards, 28 total touchdowns. He has a passer rating of 108.3. Jalen Hurts, who has a 66.5 completion percentage. He has 2,995 total passing yards. He has a total of 31 touchdowns, a passer rating of 93.2. Eight. So, you know, as you can tell, man, both of these quarterbacks have been playing well. Sunday night, it lets everybody know who's going to take over this division. That's why this game is so important, man. I don't really care about the MVP, to be honest. I don't really care about that. You know, I like that, you know, when my quarterback is in contention for it, you know, he has been playing well enough for it. I do like that. But really, I don't care about MVP. What I care about is winning Super Bowls. I want a ring. That's what I want. He can have an MVP if he wanted. I want a Super Bowl ring. I want a Lombardi. So I need my quarterback to play well enough to win so we can be en route to a Lombardi. That's what I want. All right, y'all. I want to thank y'all for stopping by. You know what I'm saying? The Diamond Crew Sports Podcast Radio Show Episode 3. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I'm glad y'all came. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Um, do all those things. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this uh, on any of the streaming podcast platforms, please do the channel a favor. Please do the, the podcast a favor. Share this. Get it to somebody else who may like some content like this. Um, look, man, and it is what it is. We getting ready, man. We getting closer to... Eagles versus Dallas in Arlington, AT&T Stadium. We about to bring the brooms out. If we sweep y'all, y'all season is going to be fluff. It's going to be fluff. And look, man, that may be the first step to the playoff loss that y'all looking for. And look, man, that's real rap. But until next time, how the out.